What should I cover this week? The latest and newest game? Or maybe a deep discussion on the MMO industry as a whole? Eh, f*** it. Ah, yes. This is more like it. I am back. This is Meridian 59, one of the very first MMOs. Yes, it still exists and it's better than ever, in that it's exactly the same as ever. But now it's on Steam. I mention this because I don't care what you are thinking about anything you're seeing on screen right now, unless it's OMG I love Meridian 59, then you're wrong. You should go play Meridian 59. Immediately. Think of it like history class. You need to learn about your roots and where MMOs came from. Also, maybe then you'll quit your constant bitching. And think of all the old school legit MMO cred you'll get in the process. You can say you've played one of the original MMOs and how awesome it is. You'll be the bomb diggity. That's still a thing, right? Well, it should be. Now, I covered Meridian 59 on this channel a long, long time ago. But, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing back then and... Yeah, it was rough. Okay, that video flat out sucked. So I want to give Meridian 59 its due, because so much of what people love about MMOs comes from this game that many people haven't even heard of. Skill-based progression, action, I use that word lightly, combat, open world PvP with a criminal system, guild housing, PvP arenas, dynamic dev run events. I mean, just damn, I love this game. Starting off, you'll choose your appearance from an extremely limited number of somewhat terrifying options. Every one of these guys has a face that if someone said, Can you believe that this guy killed 30 people, cut them up, and then put them in his fridge? And you'd say, Yeah, I could see that. But damn it, this was the 90s, who cares? Then you choose your skills and stats. This is important! As your stats controlled what skill types you were better at learning, how many skills you could learn, how much HP and mana you could have, frankly, this right here could make or break your character. I cannot even begin to tell you how many characters I screwed up because I was a dumb kid and simply didn't understand how any of this worked. And I can't even begin to tell you how many characters I screwed up because I'm also a dumb adult. Thankfully, there are some very helpful online guides to fix that one for me. Who needs to be smart when other people can be smart for you? As for your skills, there are seven schools to choose from, most of which I'm about to pronounce enthusiastically wrong. There's weapon craft for things like swords, maces, bows, shields, and the almighty scimitar. Karanin, which is mostly a buff-based magic. Jaleel, a healing and defensive magic. Kor, an unholy dark magic of death. Farron, which I only remember because it has fireballs. Rija, an illusion magic. And Jala, a bard-type skill set. Each school has levels. So you'll start off at level 1 and can only use level 1 skills. To gain knowledge in a skill, you simply use that skill. So by using a sword, you gain skill in slash. By using a mace, you gain knowledge in mace fighting. But you'll also gain knowledge in slash because technically you're slashing. By punching, you'll gain skill in brawl and punch, etc. It works the same way for spells. Eventually, you'll have enough knowledge in your level 1 skills to move up to level 2. Repeat. The main way you'll gain knowledge and skills is to go kill things. Because that's science. You'll be doing a lot of killing. Really, that's pretty much what you do in Meridian 59. So go punch some fungus in the face! Normally, I don't mean that quite so literally. But I mean, look at that fungus! It's just so punchable! Combat in Meridian 59 is action-packed. Ish. People tend to label games where you have to click to attack as having action combat. And if that's the case, Meridian 59 has it. You hold down a button, in my case E, to attack. And that's it. Action Pack. Casting spells is done by double-clicking on a spell in your spell window, or by binding it to a key, and then targeting whatever you want to cast it on. See? Action. This used to make it really easy to sit in a corner and have a rock or something equally rock-like, hold down your attack button, and then you can just auto-kill while you do something else. I don't do rocks anymore, though. I have kids for that. Okay, Faye. I need you to hold down the E key. Okay. All right. Now, just stand there all day and don't move. What? Okay, bye. As you fight, the other thing you'll level up is your health. You start off with only 20 HP, but as you fight monsters, you'll gain toughers, which is what my friends and I called them at least. You'll simply move up 1 HP at a time, all the way to 100 plus whatever your stamina stat is. And health is important, because once you hit 30 HP, you are able to be killed in the open world. Yes, open world PvP is a thing in Meridian 59. But don't worry, it's not that bad. If someone kills you, you simply drop all of your stuff and lose 1 HP and 1 knowledge point in all of your skills. Did I say not bad? Sorry, I meant infuriating! But honestly, this happens when you die to anything, so it's not like PvP is all that different from PvE. In fact, you may even come across the nice PvPer who just does it for the thrill and ends up giving you your items and money back. NPCs don't do that. They're d-
works. So honestly, losing your items isn't that bad. Equipment in Meridian isn't that big of a deal. Namely because you don't have stuff like Patriarch's Tunic of Bluntness plus five. No, it's just leather armor, mace, longsword. There's nothing too crazy. It's all fairly basic stuff and pretty cheap to buy. There are a few better items out there, but they're somewhat rare and having them came with a sense of pride. So attempting to kill someone and steal these kinds of items was a pretty valid thing to do. Although having those items meant that that player was probably pretty strong, so trying to kill them while valid may also be a very stupid thing to do. PvP, however, was not without its consequences. If you attacked an innocent player who has a white name, you would become an outlaw, turning your name orange. This means people could freely attack you without turning into an outlaw themselves. Your outlaw status would go away if you died. However, if you managed to kill an innocent player, you became a murderer, or as we called them, PKers. That stands for player killers. It's sad I feel I have to explain that. With this, you were given a red name. To get rid of your red name, you had to be pardoned by a player elected judge, or just go ahead and delete your character. Either one works. It was very common for people to take up the righteous act of hunting PKers, and very profitable for PKers to kill a bunch of people and then maybe bribe a judge into pardoning them. Meridian 59 politics were fun. In its prime, the game was full of hunters and notorious PKers. Every trip out of a city was a risk. While dying had its consequences, it just wasn't too big of a deal. It was a great example of a good risk versus reward system, and it was exhilarating. However, there were other ways to PvP without consequence. Guild Wars. No, not that one. As a guild, you were able to declare war on another guild, thereby making PvP between the two allowed without the title consequences. At least that's how I remember it working, I might be wrong. Guilds were also able to have guild halls, which were limited in number and cost quite a bit, meaning only the biggest or I guess fastest guilds could have them, and then possibly lose them in a guild war. As I said, Meridian 59 politics were fun. The other way to PvP without consequence was the PvP arena. You could challenge your buddies, enemies, or just take part in the many PvP arena tournaments that the devs would hold. These were always so much damn fun! I miss this kind of interaction that developers used to have with their communities. In Meridian 59, devs would hold events where enemies would invade cities, special enemies would spawn, or there could even be a blood moon where PvP was open without consequence. Everyone on the server would usually get involved. It was freaking great! Uh, I'm just nostalgic-gasming now, I'm sorry. Actually, no I'm not, I don't care. Truly the best part of Meridian 59 was the community that played it. Servers weren't too big, so you got to know pretty much everyone. You were like a demented family that sometimes tried to murder each other. <laughs> Just like a real family. While I may have played MUDs before it, Meridian 59 was probably my first true MMO experience, and it's still one of the best to this day. I mean, listen to this music! If this doesn't pump you up to punch some rats in the face, then you're dead inside. I really wish we could get these servers more populated because this game deserves to be played and studied. In fact, I think I'll do a community stream on it someday soon, so keep an eye out for that on my Twitter. The last thing I want to say is that with all these indie MMOs coming out that are using other classic MMOs as their inspiration, WHERE'S MY MERIDIAN 59 SUCCESSOR?! And that was Meridian 59. Seriously, I love this game. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for future videos. I've also put another video for you to watch right up here. If you want, you can follow me on social media or on Twitch for my weekly live streams. And if you really want to help the channel, you can donate to me on Patreon like these other amazing people. I don't think they've murdered 30 people. 